Call a log drum or a slit drum. Okay, it has two names. And an instrument like this was very popular in New Zealand. And then a little bit closer to home, if you trace back your history and study of the Mayans and the Aztec civilizations, you find the same drum, a horizontally split log drum. And that got me thinking, wow, the world is connected by a drum, believe it or not. Because it's the one thing that we all can relate to as a language. It doesn't matter if you speak English, French, German, Hungarian, Scottish. It doesn't matter when it comes to rhythm because it's about sound. Swing for bananas like a monkey or scratch like a bear. The elephant sneezed. No, the elephant sneezes. So when the elephant sneezes, what's it do? It goes, <gasps> right? So everyone do that. Go, <gasps> okay. And when the elephant did that, guess what? Out went the ladybug. And it still doesn't find any place to sleep. It's called Fireman Small. So it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like us. So it's kind of a little story. Of the, of the firemen in the firehouse. So it says, in the middle of town where buildings stand tall, there lives a little man called Fireman Small. He's got his little dog there. The only fireman this side of the bay, this hungry and beat from working all day. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Skip to my new, my darling. What? Yours was recess and lunch, mine was lunch and recess. Yours was recess and lunch. Yours is writing and lunch? That's good. You at least have one academic subject. Ready, Emerson? Here we go, Emerson! Hand it to me, Emerson. Go, stand in the spot of safety. Over there. Over there. This bowling ball could give me a bruise or a hematoma. This could give me a cut or a laceration. This could become a delicious biscuit at any second. <laughs> I love a delicious biscuit. Yeah. I say one, two, three, and everybody yells juggle. One, two, three! When you do decide that touching is a good thing to do, please wash your hands when you're all through and please don't poke them in their face. We always give wild animals a lot of respect and treat them with kindness, which is cool. And that's how we can feel more comfortable and they can feel more comfortable too. Of course, 
Any animal can be dangerous, so please use good judgment when you find one in the wild. Whoa. Touching animals that you know are safe is a better way to go. And always, always make sure that we wash our fingers when we're through. Whether it's a dog, cat, lizard, frog, elephant. Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony, stuck a feather in his hat and called it Rigatoni. Oh, macaroni, I'm sorry, called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, keep it up, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Find the music and the step and bring me some more candy. <laughs> You can go to learn this stuff. Do you know which kind of building I'm talking about? I think Karina knows. What kind of building? <laughs> I'm giving you a plug. The library. <laughs> yeah, you could go to a museum. That, that would help too. But a library, right here in your very own Hawthorne Library, you can go to your, uh, the section on how to draw uh, just about anything, including comic characters. And if you really want to become an artist, it's important to draw all sorts of stuff. Some people will just want to draw the character. But it's a, if you learn how to draw buildings or cars or horses or animals and trees and the sky and mountains and everything, you can put all those elements into a story. You know, it's a, if you get around to it, put yourself together a little sketchbook, just get some papers together, Put them in a notebook and you got yourself a sketchbook. Take that sketchbook wherever you go and practice drawing things. That's the way the artists do it. Yes, you have a question. All right, your next assignment. Watch. Just like you made a fish. Now watch, just slide your hand down to the bottom. We're going to make a bumblebee, just like this one. Now look, squish it, squish it, and turn it. Just like you made the fish, see? But now, look. This is going to be the body and the stinger. You can see where the stripes are going to go right here. This is the head. And this big wing, we have to divide into two wings, just like that. So all you do is find the top, bring it down, pinch it. Don't be afraid of the balloons. They're very strong. Pinch it and turn it. And turn the wings three times. And then you should have a bee if you did it right. Here is the eyes. And I pretend this is the nose. So I put an eye on one side and an eye on the other side. You can make eyes any way you want to and a smiley face. If you make it mean, that's OK. It can be a mean bee. If you make it a, if you make it a green bee with eyes, you call it a green hornet, couldn't you? or a wasp. You can call it whatever you want, but that's how I make a bee, okay? Now you might be wondering about, about the stick on the back. How many balloons do you get? Yeah. Two. Here's one, here's two. Now instead of making something else, you can put the two together, can't you? Yeah. What you do then is you just hold the bee like normal. Just hold it. Take the part that's not blown up and just kind of stretch it and wrap it around the wings. And look. You don't even have to tie it. It's already there. All right. <laughs> oh, I come from Alabama with an angel. Clap your hand, hands. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. It rained all night, the day I left, the weather, it was dry. The sun's so hot, I froze my nose, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. For I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Now if you guys take a good look at Laverne here. Oh, where are you going? If you guys take a good look at her, you guys can see her eyes. She has really big, round, dark colored eyes. That tells us that she's a nocturnal animal. Nocturnal animals have really big, round, dark colored eyes. That's how they can see really well outside when there's not a lot of light out. All she's got to do is use... She always like this? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, good. Now, what she will now do within the... Yeah, I'm so, I'm so, so... 
to the bride. They're saying, no, no, no. They're saying, no, he is not lying. He is really Petey the Pirate Parrot. Right, guys? <laughs> you scallywag! Oh! Oh, God. You guys, you guys saved the treasure. You guys are very, very good. I was about to give him the secret magic clues, but I'm glad I didn't. So, what we're gonna do. I will not tell anybody. Oh, maybe you guys. Okay, the coast is clear. This is the clue. <clears throat> you like to call names, so go look for some games. Instead of playing soccer, look for Davy Jones' Walker. Davy Jones' Walker! I know! Oh, oh no! Did I, did I just spill the magic words? Yes, you did. In recognition. <laughs> Once there was a little girl who loved the world. One day, her mom was going on a trip to Egypt. The little girl was sad. I'll send pictures, said her mom. Time for her to pack up for her trip. Her dad and the little girl took her mom to the airport. Goodbye, mom. I'll miss you, she called to her mom. The two of them drove home for lunch. They went to the park on their bicycles. The little girl met a new friend. Hi, I'm Rose, said the little girl. The other girl, hello, I'm Jessica. It's pleasing to meet you, she said to the little girl. Let's go play on the monkey bars. Days had passed and her mom was back. Rose told her mom about her new friend. It's great, her mom said. Then her mom went into the room and came back with a glass great sphinx. This is for you, she said. The little girl loved it. Now it's time for you to go to bed. The next morning, she said that it was perfect. At school, there was a new student. It is Jessica. Rose and Jessica went on field trips and nature walks together. One day after school, they had a play date. They played checkers and danced. They even sang songs. We've had a wonderful adventure, Rose and Jessica said. And that is the end. Neville. Four. He didn't have the valve closed. There we go. Okay, five. And go, Sammy. Oh! Now that, that eruption has harmed people. It's blocked the roads, so people cannot get out or in to help. It's covered up the crops, so there's nothing to eat. It's made the roofs cave in, so there's nowhere to stay in the cold night. They are on their own. They're cold and they're hungry. Most people live like this. They don't have armies and helicopters to help. They're on their own. This is why it's very important to know ahead of time. Two Pilgrim Brothers sang as they walked down the path. Together. We're two mighty pilgrims coming your way, looking for a turkey for that given day. We we'll plug them in, stove them in, cook them up right. We we'll gobble, gobble, gobble turkey for dinner tonight. The little pilgrim thought about plucking and stuffing. He thought about cooking. He wasn't so sure about plucking and stuffing and cooking. He wasn't so sure about having a turkey for Thanksgiving dinner at all. <laughs>